Right, hi. Uh, hi, everybody. Um, my name is Michael. And as, um, here's me. Um, I come from Singapore. Um, you can find me on Twitter. My Twitter handle is Kota Kung Fu. Uh, and I also tweet at Engineers for the Win. Um, I, I'm currently a software engineer at uh, Singapore Power. Um, this uh, basically the digital technologies team there. We're building some digital products for the for the for the company. Um, so my topic today is about what about Ruby on Rails uh, from a PHP guy. I guess from the topic you, get, you can guess I'm I'm the PHP guy. <laughs> um, a bit more about me. Um, uh, basically, I started coding in PHP back in 20, 2001. Uh, and I started the Singapore PHP user group back in 2007. Um, the user group right now is celebrating its 10th anniversary. Um, and that's me with the creator of PHP, Rasmus Ladoff, uh, when he was in Singapore in uh, 2015 for the PHP Conf Asia, um, which is also a conference that I run. Um, that's us in 2015. Um, but in 2014, I joined a consultancy called Neo Innovation. And that's where I started coding in Ruby and Ruby on Rails. And since then, I've been an active member of the Ruby community in Singapore. Uh, that's us, uh, the current batch of the Tech Ladies Bootcamp. Um, we're working on a project for, the, for an NGO uh, called Mountbatten Vocational School. Um, yeah. And that's me with Mats when uh, he was in Singapore for the Red Dot Ruby Conf uh, last year. Sorry, the photo is a bit blurry because I had a bit too much to drink and. You know, yeah. I don't usually do this with celebrities, but you know, um, yeah. So uh, for me as a PHP guy, switching from PHP to Ruby uh, and to Ruby on Rails, um, to, to be honest, wasn't really that hard. In, in a sense, I started my developer life as a web, web designer back when uh, formatting web pages with tables was cool. You know, that's, no. no. It's coming back, really? No. <laughs> anyway. Um, so I've been building web applications uh, in Cake PHP and Code Igniter for, for, for about 10 years. Uh, Cake PHP itself was inspired by the MV MVC pattern pioneered by, the, by Ruby on Rails. So uh, what about the languages that these both MVC frameworks were built upon, right? So having been coding in PHP for more than 10 years, um, switching to Ruby was really quite an interesting experience. Um, let me just talk a little bit about the similarities that I find. Uh, in both languages, uh, Ruby and PHP. Um, both are interpreted languages. Uh, they're dynamically typed. They're easy to understand. One reads, like one reads like English, and the other one, OK, not so much. <laughs> both are object-oriented. Um, and th yeah, that's, that's the, um, yeah, object-oriented. Last I remember, yes, it still is. Um, the differences, what are the differences between the two? Uh, in PHP, I guess. Um, how many PHP developers here? I mean, were PHP developers or are still PHP developers? Quite, quite a few. Yeah, represent. Anyway, um, <laughs> you know, PHP from its very beginnings was a web-centric kind of language. Uh, it's meant for building websites. It works very well with the Apache web server. Um, it's not quite a language in a sense. It's more like a collection of functions. Um, but in PHP 7, they, they have made some concerted effort to kind of put it together and get the act together and make it more like a language, which is good. Um, and right, whereas Ruby uh, is a general purpose uh, language, it's more uh, it's there are more efforts. Uh, there's a bit more effort to make it make it web web enabled, and it's a very expressive language, as I've said earlier. So some of the syntax differences between the two, like on the left, you have how you declare a string in PHP, num uh, and the different uh, numbers and so on and so forth, and variables. So always start with a dollar sign. Um, an object with a, of a variable will have a dash greater than, and so on and so forth. Uh, Ruby is pretty much close to being the same. Like local variables, you don't need to put a dollar sign anywhere. A global variable, you need to put a dollar sign. Um, and you don't need to use a dash greater than to refer to variables and, and methods. And arrays, they have arrays in PHP and arrays in Ruby and hashes in Ruby. And um, if, if, if else statements in PHP and Ruby, and this is how you declare a class in PHP. Like class, class T extends beverages. Same thing on the right, that's, uh, that's how you do it in Ruby. 
Um, yeah, and I kind of like the fact that with a Ruby class, <laughs> um, all you need to do is, yeah, a little private here and the rest of, it, of the stuff below are private methods, which is kind of nice. Um, where, Ruby, where Ruby wins, I think, is in areas where uh, you don't need a semicolon at the end of a statement. You know, I've, I've been bitten so many times. Like, sometimes I, I write some Ruby and I kind of like have to maintain some PHP code. And like, why is this code failing? Oh, right, I left out a semicolon. Right, happens to us all. Um, dot is not used for concatenation. Like in PHP, you could put dot to concatenate, concatenate two lines, two strings rather. Um, in, in Ruby, you don't need to. Um, calling methods, you think you call methods with one less character. You know, like, you know, in, yeah. We don't, you, like in, in Ruby, just dot something, and in PHP, you got a dash greater than, you know. One less character, less less write, less typing on the keyboard. You know, um, curly braces are, are not always necessary. You know, and uh, what opening tags? <laughs> you don't need opening tags in, in, in what? Oh yeah, we don't need that in, in Ruby, right? That's great. Um, what other thing? What are other things I like about Ruby? Um, tooling, the tooling support is great. Testing, profiling, debugging. This is not like afterthoughts in Ruby. I feel. In PHP, it's more like, oh wait, we need to do some testing. Um, yeah, how do we do that? Um, dependency management is pretty easy, you know, with Bundler. Of course, in PHP, we now have Composer, which also does the same thing. But it, you all know that Composer kind of copied from uh, where Bundler came from, right? So yeah, but you can easily switch between Ruby versions, which is great. With RBN for R RVM, you can move between different Ruby versions. In PHP, it's a bit harder. I think you can do that in the, uh, some Apache config or something. You can probably just switch between different INI files, but it's not as straightforward. And open source community is pretty awesome, right? So problems are, we have a lot of smart people in the Ruby community, and they kind of solve a lot of problems that we face ourselves. And yeah, so that's Ruby. What about Ruby on Rails? Uh, what, what do I like about it? So. There's no need to depend on a separate web server for development. So there's built-in web server in where you do Rails new and it has Puma installed and all that. It's pretty great. Web, previously it was WebBrick. It, PHP only got that quite recently. I think 5.4 they introduced a testing server built-in, um, but it's not as good as what we have in in, in the Rails community. Um, command line interfaces. These are pretty awesome. Although you can say Laravel has something similar, but it's not as easy to read, uh, easy to use. Tracking DB's changes is pretty, pretty straightforward, relatively easy. Um, usually, there's a gem for that. When you have a problem, there's usually a gem, which is great, right? Um, awesome. Um, Rails is also very MVP friendly, so it's com you, can, you can use a lot of commonly used uh, stuff, or rather commonly used things that you need to do. You can probably find a gem, you know, there's a gem for that. And for ideas, the product, you can get, get it out in a very short time, um, and that's great. It's relatively secure and, and uh, out of the box. Um, there are also many development uh, or deployment options, like with Heroku or Azure, or you want to do self-hosted with VPS. It's pretty straightforward. Um, that's my repo, uh, one of my repos rather. Um, and you can see most more. I have more Ruby projects in there right now than PHP projects. So. Some of the projects I've actually worked on on my, on my own uh, uh, using Ruby on Rails, this is uh, engineers.sg, which is a site I, I created um, to, basically I created a group to go around different tech meetups in Singapore to kind of record the meetups. Um, because I feel that there's a lot of talks uh, happening in Singapore, different user groups, and I felt there was, good, there was no way to kind of like, uh, no one is actually keeping track of them or recording those videos. So I thought there was a way I could contribute back and because I have some knowledge in video editing and videography and all that stuff, so I thought it would be great for me to try this. Um, so I've been doing this for the last three years, um, recording uh, meetups at first and more recently uh, conferences. So the last two Red Dot Ruby conference was actually rec recorded by me and uh, quite a few other things like iOS Conf, um, WordCamp and uh, DevOps Days and a few others. So the whole site was actually built in Ruby on Rails. Um, I think I, first, I did the first uh, cut of the website over a uh, weekend. It was a weekend hack, put together a small site. Initially, it was uh, redirecting just to the YouTube channel. And I kind of like, hey, we need to come up with a nice uh, page for this. 
Um, yeah, the front end is Rails. I use Active Admin for the back end to do, uh, make changes to things. That's pretty easy. Uh, it's, after a while, because I was also uploading a lot of videos, and a lot of the tasks that I do for uploading files to YouTube was, was, uh, was kind of tedious. So I came up with this small little website to, for my volunteers to also upload the videos themselves. So I, I built a little engineer's SG upload site. Uh, it was done in Rails. It was uh, on a VPS running Nginx passenger. And because it was, I was handling some large files, it was like four, five, uh, sometimes uploading up to three gigs or four gigs of files. I need to use an Nginx uh, file upload module to kind of handle those large files. Of course, the, the processing and building, and or rather uh, setting them out to YouTube and processing the file was all done using Sidekick. Um, which is pretty easy. Um, so I kind of built this over a couple of weekends. Um, but again, it was very easy to get it up and running, MVP. And cu currently, the project well, uh, well, that I'm working on for the uh, Tech Ladies Bootcamp was also built on Ruby on Rails. Um, this is actually, actually the website for Mountbatten Vocational School. Um, so basically, we built a student management system for the, for the school so that they can uh, take, keep track of who the students that, that go through the school. These are students. Uh, the students are basically uh, 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 children with disabilities, like autism or um, uh, uh, visually handicapped. And we basically, the school basically brings them, uh, train them for uh, hospitality jobs like uh, food preparation, F&B, and uh, housekeeping. So basically, the school prepares them for that. And for the longest time, they have, have been doing a lot of these things in, on paper. So as part of the project for Tech Ladies, we're actually building a web uh, student management system for them. Some of the downsides of, although I talk about a lot of good things about Ruby and uh, Ruby on Rails, but there's some downsides to it. Um, for serving web static or static content, you have probably have to bring your own web server to do that. Um, it's quite memory intensive, but probably usually usually solvable by throwing more machines at the problem. So you can get lots of money to throw, just spin up the dynos and all that stuff that usually solves problem, right? Some reflections. So what it, I mean, for me, it was a deliberate decision moving into uh, le, uh, picking up Ruby and Ruby on Rails. For me, if I only knew PHP, uh, if all this, if PHP is all that, all, all the only, if PHP is the only language that I know, um, it's kind of like a hammer, and everything I see is a nail, right? Knowing more tools just give me more options and ability to, to determine what is the best tool for the job. <coughs> so basically, um, everything. Uh, we, whatever language we use, these are mainly tools for building great websites and uh, great web apps. Um, knowing more tools give us a, a more ability to decide on, on which are the better tools to use for, for the job. On top of that, knowing, uh, not, knowing different languages or different frameworks is one thing. It's far better to know, to have better, deeper knowledge in design patterns uh, in understand, so that we can understand how well do, how we should better build uh, web, uh, web apps. You can also you can actually write seven thousand lines of spaghetti code in Ruby as well. So um, so knowing design patterns helps you de design your code better, such that it's more maintainable and easier to make changes. So if you're if you're any of you, if, I don't know whether any of you here are actually new to this. If you are, these are some resources I I uh, personally tried and went through, and was very helpful to me. Um, try Ruby, the Rails guide, Rails Girls guide, uh, Ruby on Rails tutorial, Rails cast is a bit outdated, but the videos are pretty kind of are still pretty good. Um, of course, if you are interested, go for the for, for the Ruby meetup. You can meet like-minded people as well. Um, yeah, so that's me, Kota uh, Kung Fu, and engineers for the win. Thank you. Thank you so much, Michael. I'm so glad you've seen the light of rails. Yeah. <laughs>